How can you improve after a brain injury? Today, I'm here with Dr. Alina Fong at a program called Cognitive FX. Dr. Fong is a neuropsychologist and she's worked with people with brain injuries for many years. Dr. Fong, will you tell us about functional MRI and how it can be used to help people with brain injury? I would love to. So functional MRI uh, is a different type of MRI. Um, like a normal MRI would just be a static image of your brain. Uh, you've probably had one for your knee before, know someone who's had a static MRI. But a functional is different because we're actually looking at how the brain is working, how it's using blood when you're trying to do different types of activities like um, memory, attention, uh, concentration, um, problem solving, executive functioning, organization. Uh, so we designed a test that allows us to see how your brain is, is compensating or how it's working when it's trying to do hard things. Um, and so often when a patient has a traumatic brain injury, whether it's a mild or a concussion, um, to more of a severe stroke or maybe a more severe traumatic brain injury, um, there are often a lot of cognitive deficits or cognitive challenges uh, that a patient experiences and this test can highlight what those areas are and maybe what areas are working harder to compensate for some other areas that might not be working hard enough. You also use functional MRI for treatment, I understand. Correct. Can you tell me more about that? I would love to. So, um, our functional MRI analyzes almost 60 different regions of the brain, and it can show me very clearly if there is normal blood flow and normal what we call neurovascular coupling uh, in those areas, or if there's some dysregulation between the blood flow uh, to different parts of the brain. And depending on if those structures are either too activated or hyperactivated, or hypoactivated, which means there's not enough blood getting to those areas, I can really target treatments to those specific parts of the brain. Um, and it really does depend on which direction, so whether it's too high or too low, because treatments will differ for those particular directions. Could you give me an example of a particular patient and how you m might use the functional MRI, especially for treatment? I, yeah, sure. So really, um, our, our patient population that we um, work the most with would be concussion patients. Um, concussion patients are special in a sense that um, they often don't get a lot of attention um, from the medical providers because often their structural MRIs and their CTs look normal. Um, but they can still be struggling. And so we often deal with patients that um, have been struggling for months, sometimes years, and a lot of their medical providers have tried everything and then have discharged them saying, there's really nothing else I can do for you, but they're still struggling. And the problem is it's an invisible injury because they look so normal. So what attracts them to our treatment is this functional MRI can actually show objectively what's going on even though other scans look normal. So. Um, a patient that I can talk to you about right now um, was a, um, an average student. Uh, she was actually uh, 15 years old and interestingly she came to us from Latvia. Uh, she was um, at a youth activity and a tree fell and hit her on the head. Um, structural imaging though looked normal but she was severely impaired after that. Um, school, which was very easy for her, became very difficult. She had difficult, so much difficulty with balance that at times she had to hold on to walls, sometimes use canes, wheelchairs um, as well. She needed a couple weeks of treatment, but after the first week of treatment, she was walking without a cane, without a wheelchair. Um, at the end of treatment, uh, she was running, jumping, dancing, doing kickboxing, um, 
and getting back to her normal life. Um, I'm still in touch with that family and uh, uh, they um, sent, uh, often send us pictures of what she's doing now and how she's thriving. Thank you.